Welcome back, 1114 on your midday. Jackson County Sheriff Daryl Forte once again making himself available to talk with people this morning. Social distancing guidelines prevent in-person meetings, he says on Twitter. That's right. So he's been asking people on Twitter to chat with him on the phone, and he's doing that with us once again today. Good morning, Sheriff. Thank you for speaking with us. Good morning. Thank you all. I wanted to ask you, obviously, with a lot of us wearing masks out in public, they do conceal identity in some cases. It's difficult to see who people are. Have you had any instances you've heard of people taking advantage of that for criminal activity at all? No, we, we at the sheriff's office hadn't had any reported instances. I just wanted to share that information to keep people vigilant and not let their guards down. Sheriff Forte, you're putting out on Twitter there, the, this is the second morning we've noticed you doing that. They're putting out times that people can talk to you this morning. It was 5.45 to 6.15 and then 10 to or 11 to noon right now, So, which is what we're taking advantage of. What are people that are reaching out to you wanting to ask about? Whenever you have people that live in Jackson County reaching out to you, are they concerned? Do they have fears about what's going on uh, past what is, can happen in the Jackson County area? What are they asking you about whenever they talk to these conversations? Uh, they have fears, and, and, and I've been surprised at most of the calls that they're asking, uh, are they, they're thanking me for reaching out. I mean, we have so many kind people out there, so many supportive people for our uh, first responders and our professional medical staff, and they've all also asked if we had any de deputies or inmates tested. Uh, and the results, we've had four inmates tested with negative results. We have one deputy that was tested with negative results. And also we have a medical isolation section set up in our detention section in case we have something that we need to isolate someone. How difficult is it to operate in an incarceration situation like this and keep inmates and staff separated as they need to be? It, it's not difficult. We, we take temperatures when we need to. Anyone over 65, their temperatures taken on a regular basis. Uh, I, I think what it is is the fear part, not knowing how it's communicated exactly, not knowing if anyone there already has it, whether it be an employer or someone else is not showing any signs. So I think that just the emotional piece and the un uncertainty piece is more what we're dealing with versus anything actually occurring. Sheriff, I'm curious about responding to when people call 911 right now and, and reach out for help that they need. We saw from, for example, Kansas City Fire Department last week asking people if it's possible when they call 911 to come out and meet them outside of the home, for example, so they can do an assessment and, and maybe try and mitigate some of the risks of passing germs to one another, so to speak. What kind of changes are you making whenever, as your office making, whenever you respond to people once they've called for help? We're doing exactly the same thing. Well, our dispatchers are asked a series of questions. Uh, we practice social distancing, uh, alternative handling of calls, whether it be a stealing, theft from auto, or information calls. We can handle those over the phone now. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to change how we operate in the future. Because it, it, had I instituted something like this previously, People might not have welcomed it. So even after this is over, we're going to change some of the things and some of the ways we operate. I don't know how we handle calls for service so we can use those resources, like looking for additional uh, sex offenders who are non-compliant and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm looking at this as an opportunity for us to work as a team, for us to have an outreach to some of our seniors. We were putting together a team on how we might be able to reach some of our seniors that, that don't have that communication and contact that they had before with some people. So we're trying to do some other things. And again, look at this as an opportunity to change how we operate and continue to do this even after this is over. Oh, Sheriff, I don't think that'll be the only way our lives will change after this for sure. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you.